so that's Jesse. Um, so about three years ago, when uh, three and a half, almost four years ago, when I started off with Christy Lee, um, I went to, up to the summer camp and uh, happened to see I was running the inner city program stuff. We had maybe about, I'd say maybe about 300 kids in the inner city program. So let me explain. This morning in the city of Ottawa, three, 33,000 children woke up living in poverty in the city. 33,000. That's 17 gymnasiums filled with children living out of below the poverty line. Zero to 18 years of age in our city. Social housing projects exist. The hood exists in Ottawa. Christy Lake Kids is an organization that goes right into the inner city projects and works with the kids. We reduce barriers. Can't come to dodgeball? That's okay. We call 600 kids every week. Hi, Tammy calling from Christy Lake Kids, wondering why you're not at dodgeball. Oh, you don't want to pick up the phone? We'll go knock on your door. So we go knock on their door. 600, that's what we do. Summer camp, we go visit every single kid in their home before they come up to summer camp. Every single kid making sure what do they need. Kids don't have shoes, we'll find shoes. Don't have any clothes to come up and do it, we'll find it. Zero cost at Christy Lake Kids for the families that are living at or below poverty line. Our active pursuit model, nobody else in North America is doing this. We are the only organization in North America that literally bangs on the doors every day of these kids to see what is it. A kid moves to another community, we will stop that kid Lightly. Um, and we will literally figure out where they are. Phone gets disconnected, that's okay. We have all emergency phone contacts. Jesse is the recipient of our what we call legal stalking behaviors. So <laughs> Jesse, um, three years ago, I approached, uh, I was standing in the, uh, in the dining hall up at camp, and uh, I see this kid, you know, 100 plus kids, and I see this one kid waving at me. Says, uh, Tam, can you come over here? So he was, what, how old were you, Jess, at the time? 13? Yeah, he was 13. It was just before his 14th birthday. Two days before his 14th birthday, he says, Tim, listen, I got myself in a pinch here. And I said, oh, okay, with Jesse, that could be a lot of things, and it was. So he said, I got myself in a pinch. Jesse lives in poverty. These kids that you see standing around here, they live in poverty. It's okay that we say that. If we don't destigmatize poverty, then it becomes a hushed thing. Christy Lake Kids only serves kids living out of below the poverty line. These youth that you see here and the 600 kids that we work with, they do not allow poverty to define them. It is something that is currently happening to them. That is it. These youth that stand here, they're not embarrassed by it. Those of us that grew up in poverty and social housing in the city, we don't stand here embarrassed by this. What we do is we become active in the community like you folks. We become part of the solution. These youth are our future leaders. These are our leaders in training here at Christie Lake Kids. Jesse Boucher is the gentleman right over there who actually kick-started this whole process for us to think about civic-mindedness in Christie Lake Kids community more than what we were already doing, which by the way, over the years has been a lot. Jesse said to me, Tam, I got myself on diversion. I said, oh boy. So Diversion actually is a very neat program where the kids get sort of a chance to be able to go back into their community when they've broken the law and they have to either do community service, anger management, something. Jesse said, listen Tam, he said, the only place that I ever have been successful is Christy Lake Kids. He goes, that's a truth. He said, if I go to anger management, I can't afford the $5 bus fare there. He said, they're going to end up charging me. He said, I can't afford it. The workers won't. I have addiction in my family, I've got a lot of issues going on, I can't even afford to get myself up and going in the morning because there's no food in the house. This is serious. This is what our kids are facing every day. Many of them don't have these barriers, it's just that their families are trying to work as hard as they can to get through the day and to be able to afford the things like food. Not tuition, not summer camp fees, not any of this stuff. This is the reality. This is Jesse's family, if you look. These are cousins of his. Every single one of those individuals in those fam in the families that you see there, one, two, three, four, five families under one family, all are in Christy Lake Kids or have been. That is just one extended family we serve in Christy Lake. What's important for you to understand, when Jesse approached me and said, I'm on diversion, Christy Lake Kids is the only place that I can be successful. Will you let me into the LIT program, the Leadership and Training program? Now at that time, 
we only had five kids, five kids in the LIT program. It was for kids 15 to 17, and they got to spend one year in there. And I said, Jess, you're too young, honey, you can't do that. I'm, I'm really stuck. He says, Tammy, he said, listen, he said, it was really stupid. He said, I wanted to get my mother a Mother's Day present. He said, we had no money. He said, we you know, didn't have any food, we didn't have anything, but my mom's really been trying. So I went and I stole a purse for her for Mother's Day and I got busted. So I was like, wow, you know what, Jesse? Funny thing, we just started a new LIT program. It's a five year long program for kids between the ages of 13 to 18. And I said, and you're the first person into it. So then I had to go back to the executive director at that time and sort of explain how we have a new five year LIT program uh, <laughs> for the most at risk youth. So, Today, three years later, I have 80 of the most at-risk kids um, in the LIT program. They're not going anywhere. Uh, next year, we add another year, we'll be at 110, and after that, we'll be at 130. We follow these kids all the way through. These kids give back to the inner city program, the dodgeball, basketball, volleyball, all of the different programs that we run in the city to keep the kids after school and on the weekends engaged. Camp is our history. The kids are our future. The inner city program is the link that we make with them the whole year round. You folks, when you raise money, you are contributing to a much larger picture than what you realized probably 15 minutes ago. 600 out of 33,000 is what we're serving today at Christie Lake. And we want to expand that civic mindedness through these youth. So Jesse finished his diversion um, with us and stuck around. So, and that was, well, literally two and a half years later. So he's still, uh, he's still strong with us today. Um, we'll give you a little bit of feedback, or sorry, we'll give you a little bit of insight. Kids have to go to school 85% of the time. If they don't, we show up at their school, all 80 of them. And I'm telling you, it's pretty embarrassing when I show up at the school because they're not going to school. Kids need to be coming 100% of the time to our camp weekends. There are seven camp weekends that we have put in. So when you see the bus, ladies and gentlemen, at the back, and you see all the kids coming in, that's their time to get away from the projects. It's their time to develop different social skills. It's their time to have healthy, safe sleepovers in, in a community, which is the Christie Lake Kids community. So when they come back, there's better things that they can engage with. So I'm going to pass it over to... John, sorry about that one. Um, so everyone, if you can, they're going to keep this up. If you can quickly keep taking a look over there, you'll see something change over after the presentation. Great job holding those signs, by the way, kids. You know, <laughs> strong arms and me. Uh, thank you, Darcy and Tammy. And uh, as you just heard how uh, important this program is, Certainly, uh, the numbers are staggering alone, and uh, I know I could have used more of that homework program, I think, when, uh, when I was going to school as well. Um, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our next guest. Uh, he is the GM of Enbridge Gas, who not only housing us and uh, helping us to a good meal this morning, but a big part of this program. Um, it also brings us our first check presentation. So Rick Campbell, if at this time you can join us, uh, let's have a good round of applause. Thank you. Well, thank you all. And on behalf of Enbridge, uh, welcome to our building. And thank you very much for all the time and effort and energy you expand in supporting Christian Lake kids to all the businesses and volunteers and staff and community leaders. It was a uh, short visit to a very similar camp near Guelph, Ontario when I was eight years old and inspired me to become a uh, counselor as a young teenager and a uh, canoe specialist and whitewater instructor from the West Coast of Canada for 15 years. I made a mistake of telling Darcy that, so I think I being recruited for some summer events and overnighters, so we'll see if that unfolds. Uh, Christy Lake the Kids has become a real integral part of the value system it is what we like to do, and to hear uh, the stories about the nature of the support they give to the kids in this community and it's really heartwarming and reminds us all how important our efforts and volunteerism in the community are. 
Christy Lake's helped the 600 kids in the STAR program last year and develop really for the first time the leadership skills, the self-confidence, the uh, sense of achievement, uh, often for the very first time in their lives. Uh, so thank you all for making uh, all of our time is precious, and we have to choose where we spend our volunteer moments, spend our dollars. And I can't think of a better one than help them you know, continue to support Christy Lake. I'll be out on the shore on the lake in June with uh, the Enbridge team. Um, it has become a tradition for the GM to be in that canoe, so I'll be there. I've not heard how the tradition has worked out in terms of performance on the lake, whether we all stay dry or anything like that. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I've heard that story. <laughs> so thank you very much. So let's kick off the proceedings in terms of uh, presentations. Enbridge has a donation of $15,000 for the Lake Kids, and uh, let me pass it over. something but uh, yeah, paddling in so I'm not going to help you win any races. Uh, we can continue with uh, some of our great sponsors. Uh, CGI the sponsorship provides the online registration and the pledge system that allows the teams and participants uh, to have an easy way to fundraise. So this is a big part of it as well. I'd like to thank CGI and we'd like to call upon the director of consulting, uh, Margaret Tomasini, to, to come up and uh, say a few words as well, another check presentation. So please welcome her, thank you. Good luck, smooth sailing, both the pledging and the power. 